30 seconds, 30 seconds. This is Houston. Are you ready for the event? Houston, we are ready for the event. Associate Administrator Bob Cabana, this is Mission Control Houston. Please call station for a voice check. Station. Station, this is Bob. How do you hear? Hello, Bob. We got you loud and clear. Welcome to the ISS. Awesome. Well, I really wish I was up there with you. I uh, thank you so much for joining us for this event today. I cannot believe it was 25 years ago today that we uh, grappled Zarya and joined it uh, with the Unity node. Uh, absolutely amazing. And when you think of all that's been accomplished on ISS in the, uh, in the last 25 years, 3,000 uh, research and educational investigations from 108 countries around the world. You know, we really appreciate what you guys are doing up there, all the science, the investigations to make life better here on our Earth and prepare us for exploring beyond our home planet as we go back to the moon with our Artemis and on to Mars. Absolutely awesome. Thank you. And hey, this is Joel. Uh, you guys look awesome. Thank you very much for uh, taking time out of your schedule today. I know we keep you busy with utilization, research, technology development, commercialization activities, uh, but we want to celebrate today all the people who design, built, and operate the International Space Station. And the fact that you guys have a unique perspective, me and on orbit, and help us celebrate 25 years of the International Space Station, 23 years of continuous crew presence. Uh, Bob and I have a few questions for you today. We'll alternate the questions. I'll start with the first one. they will open questions for anyone to answer, and if multiple people want to answer, feel free to go ahead and answer. And so my first question for you guys today is, what surprised you when you got on orbit? Uh, what was something that you couldn't be taught on Earth that you had to get in orbit and had to learn it by yourselves. So that's our first question for you. Well, weightlessness, you know, that is something that is truly unique up here. There is uh, unfortunately no way to train weightlessness uh, on Earth. We can get a taste of it on a parabolic flight, but it's just not the same as actually living and working in weightlessness up here. And it's uh, not just fun, but it's also very challenging uh, whenever you have to find a piece of equipment or a tool in a bag and uh, you have to get that piece of equipment out or tool out without losing everything else in the bag. I mean, we've all on multiple occasions lost items. Um, luckily, most of them we found again uh, near an air vent, uh, maybe a couple minutes, maybe a couple hours later. But uh, it is certainly one of the challenges that uh, you don't really get to learn how to cope with until you get up here. Bob? So it is an international space station. Uh, when we entered for the first time on December 10th, uh, Sergey Krikalov and I went through all the modules side by side uh, as an international crew. We've had 273 people from 30, 21 different countries visit the space station, and we've got four of the five partner countries represented right now, partner agencies represented right now in ISS. What have you learned working together as an international crew? What, what's, how do you find life on ISS? One of my favorite aspects of the International Space Station is the international part of it. Um, you know, as you said, we've got four of the five different partner agencies up here, and we each bring our unique perspectives, not just from our different nationalities, but also our different, uh, our different backgrounds, whether that's backgrounds. Um, and so I think you're definitely strengthened by the international partnership. You know, it's just like gaining, gaining redundancy in things when you have multiple partners 
uh, working together, uh, it's stronger and more resilient to any sort of uh, problems or obstacles that come in the way. And so uh, it definitely makes us stronger. And I think that's why we have been had the International Space Station up here for 25 years now. Awesome. You know, you guys are ambassadors to the world. And is there one thing that you'd want people on Earth to know about the International Space Station? And what would that be? Uh, well, one of the things that surprised me most as I started at NASA and then started training for this mission is just how complex the International Space Station program is. Um, there are groups of people, teams of people all over the world who are figuring out every aspect of these missions, um, everything from our food and clothes to the science research that we'll be doing on board. Um, they're also the ones who are operating space station. Believe it or not, uh, even though we're on board, we don't actually fly space station. Um, that's flown by the teams of flight controllers and mission control centers in Houston and Russia and elsewhere on the planet. And so uh, we're super grateful to be supported by this amazing team. And um, it's just a really inspiring effort to be a part of. Awesome. Thank you. So <clears throat> we're in the decade of science on the International Space Station now, and it's pretty amazing all the things that are getting done. I got asked by some of the audience here with me today, does the crew like doing science in space? So I'm asking you guys, what's your favorite experiment? Is there anything that really captures your imagination while you're working up there? Okay, I'll start and then we might have a few others chime in. Um, but one of the things that I found most interesting on board is all the human research that we do. Um, and that's just recently two things that I've gotten to be involved in. One was this, is the Cypher experiment, which uh, Satoshi and I are both a part of. And that is a study comprised of 14 different experiments um, studying all aspects of human physiology and psycholo psycho psychology in space and how the human body adapts to the space environment. Um, so that's been very interesting and that study's aimed at um, improving the health of astronauts on long duration missions. Uh, the other thing that we've all been getting to work on since SpaceX 29 arrived um, is a couple different experiments in the life sciences glove box. And those experiments are all studying um, aging, so the aging process of the human body and, ch and our immune system and how that's impacted as we age. Believe it or not, uh, we all get older faster when we are on orbit. And so that essentially speeds up time for researchers um, so they can study the phenomenon that happens in our cells um, at a faster rate than they could on Earth. And again, the goal of that is helping improve uh, the health of astronauts on longer duration missions to the moon and Mars, but also to help improve life on Earth for people um, in terms of tissue degradation and disease as humans age. And, and just to add, I think what I find truly fascinating is the, the breadth of experiments that we do up here. You know, we have everything from the cold in the atom laboratory where we're studying uh, Bose-Einstein condensates, which are, um, you know, particles very close to the absolute zero uh, temperature point. We have the alpha magnetic spectrometer on the outside of the space station. Uh, then we have the biofabrication facility inside, uh, which essentially is a 3D printer where we can print human tissue, uh, human organs even, or at least that's what we're leading up towards. So really, the research up here spans so many fields, and I think that's incredibly interesting. Uh, the experiments which we really, like, there are so many, but I wanted to talk also about psychological experiments which we are doing right now because, you know, I was so surprised that when you live here and you're deprived of common things and you work together within, like, a small group of people, you see how your emotions and skills evolve and, like, things which uh, may get you, may, make you sad, uh, they are, like making you really sad and things which make you laugh you are really you know the degree of those emotions is a little bit different and there are a few experiments which study that and i think it's fascinating especially to see how they change over the term of like a few months 
which is really, really amazing, and I think it will help us to build the way towards uh, longer flights. Great answers. Thank you, guys. Um, as we look forward to the International Space Station in the next few years, what are some of the important things we need to keep doing on Space Station to keep Space Station a successful mission and also to help the commercial destinations that are coming forward uh, towards the end of the decade? Well, so, something that excites me um, are the number of national astronauts from countries who aren't necessarily a part of the uh, uh, original partnership behind the International Space Station, that they now have an opportunity through uh, commercial programs to come up here uh, and conduct science and technology uh, development. And I hope that uh, over the next uh, many years, uh, we'll continue to see more and more uh, countries send their national astronauts up here uh, in order to increase uh, the, the, you know, the international aspect of the space station. I think that's uh, incredibly exciting to see how many uh, countries and hopefully also in the future uh, private companies are interested in utilizing a laboratory in low Earth orbit. So one of the things that I love to do whenever I had any spare time was just look out the window at the Earth as it uh, went by. And I always told first-time flyers, stick your nose up to the window and make a memory. It's really a special opportunity that you have. You know, you guys have that amazing cupola. I is there anything that you've noticed looking down on the Earth that uh, has caused you to think differently? Or is there any particular place that you're looking for? What's, uh, what's your favorite thing to do looking out that cupola? I was really amazed by the way, uh, by the view of lightnings, you know, those like big fields of clouds and uh, without any stop, like instantaneous lights here and there, like they might, sometimes they might be like five or 10 per second. And you see those fields of lightnings at night over the clouds and that amazes me so much. I cannot just stop doing that. And all the time we do air raid exercises, I cannot like during the breaks between exercises I go and and look at those. That is really amazing. I didn't expect that it looks so magnificent. And also just that it's every time we, you know, we pass over uh, the same areas every few days, but it, it's, it's different every single time based on the weather, based on the lighting. So the same exact spot. Um, looks diff just slightly different each time and each time there's something beautiful about it and now you know we've been passing over uh, a lot of snowy regions in the north and and it looks totally different than it did when we first got up here so just the like how alive it is and and beautiful and changing awesome awesome questions you know every time you guys answer a question you put smiles on our faces down here so thank you guys um you talked about some of the research, and are there any results that you would like to see? Or, you know, you do an experiment, and you're like, oh, I would really wish this would result in this, this answer, or this would result in that answer. Um, have you got any, any thoughts on the research? And, and I'd be curious to see, if, you know, what you think about um, kind of the future and how we want to continue research on board Space Station. It's a tough one. I think it would be so interesting to see how we can protect humans from radiation. Like we are doing a lot of experiments on how you can block radiation and how you can uh, help to save the human from that, uh, those levels, especially if you go to different orbits. Uh, we are doing that a lot here and I'm wondering if we can find the material or another means of stopping the radiation so that we can uh, find the way to travel to Mars and beyond. Awesome answer. Great answer. Great answer. Great answer. So, when I was I, up, I, I would just uh, perhaps also, uh, sorry, just add that uh, I think it's very interesting to see if if we'll develop 
a uh, commercial capability uh, in low Earth orbit in the future. Uh, so uh, I mentioned biofabrication earlier. You know, will it be possible to uh, actually produce uh, human tissue uh, or human tissue equivalents or organ equivalents up here uh, for use on the Earth, uh, or perhaps uh, fiber optic pr production, which is also something that we are uh, just testing now uh, during this mission as well. Um, so. Those are examples of something perhaps in the future could find commercial aspects, and I think that's really interesting. Totally agree. Commercial LEO destinations are going to be so important. We have so many questions, and we're, we're running out of time rapidly. I think we've got about five minutes left. Uh, you know, when I left the space station, Node 1 was pretty spartan and immaculate. It's uh, kind of accumulated a lot of stuff over the years, and with 275 launches to ISS, have you guys uh, hit anything for future crews or lost something up there that you're still looking for? <laughs> well, we might have found something that uh, someone had been looking for for quite a while. Our uh, good friend, Frank Rubio, who headed home, uh, has been blamed for quite a while for uh, eating the tomato, but we can exonerate him. Uh, we found the tomatoes. Awesome, awesome. I think we'll have probably one one more question, and then we'll probably hand back over to Capcom and let you guys get back to work. But, you know, when you return to Earth, um, what's the one thing that, and maybe there's more than one thing, that you're going to want to explain the people here on Earth the, the, your favorite memory of the International Space Station. I think it's a, a beautiful view of the Earth from the International Space Station, uh, so that uh, we we rec recognize that we need to uh, nurture the mother planet Earth. Awesome, thank you. Um, hey, just uh, I'll say a couple words and I'll hand it over to Bob and then we'll get it over to Capcom. But just uh, awesome to see you guys, uh, see your smiling faces. We really want to thank you for everything you do. Thank you for helping us celebrate 25 years of the International Space Station. Uh, to me, it's been one of the best uh, best things I've been able to do in my career. And uh, people like you on orbit, people here on the ground, uh, they make it special every day. So over to you, Bob. Well, just thank you so much for your time. Uh, treasure your experience up there together. It really is a special place. Thank you for all that you do. We look forward to seeing you all home uh, back here on Earth. This is still a very special place also. And uh, let's just keep charging into the future, working together as one on the International Space Station. Thanks, guys. Houston, back to you. Houston. Station, this is Houston ACR, and that concludes the event. Thank you, Associate Administrator Bob Cabana and Space Station Program Manager Joel Montalbano. Station, we are now resuming operational audio communications. <laughs>